Want to have better conversations? Join the Small Talk Made Simple class. In this 10-day email course, you'll learn how to be more confident and competent at approaching people, having meaningful conversations, and talking about yourself. And it's completely free. Sign up now at thecmethod.com. You're listening to Stand Out, Get Noticed, the show that helps you communicate with confidence so you can stand out from the crowd and get noticed by all the right people. To subscribe to the show, go to thecmethod.com. What's up, guys? Christina Cantor's here with you for episode 74. I recorded this episode and I, I'm now editing and I realized that I lost the very opening intro that I recorded for some reason. So that's why I'm recording this for you real quickly here from my office. So... Let's get into the episode. This episode is all about how to speak with more authority. Now, you may have experienced this if you've taken on a new position. So maybe you've been promoted or you've been put in charge of projects and now you're being looked up to as a leader and a decision maker, which is amazing. I mean, you've got this great opportunity, but inside you're thinking, why are they looking to me for answers? I don't know anything. I'm not sure if my ideas are any good. And as you start to second guess yourself, when you speak, you sound like you lack confidence, like you're unsure of yourself and that you can't do your job. Now it's okay. You're not alone. I've been working through this with a bunch of my coaching clients, which is why I'm doing an episode on it this week. Now I frequently get asked, how do I speak with more authority? How do I come across as being an expert when I feel like I'm not? How do I get my clients, colleagues, and higher level management to respect me, take me seriously, and listen to my ideas? So today I'm going to share with you nine ways in which you can speak with more authority. But firstly, what does it mean to speak with authority? Now, I'm not talking about being a dictator who walks around demanding that people work faster and kiss your feet or whatever. It's not about that. It's not about dominating people. It's more about sounding sure of yourself and that when you have an idea and you present it, people believe you and they feel like they want to to do that thing and they want to back you up. And you can run meetings and stay in control and you come across as an expert and someone that people look up to, a true leader. And why is this important to speak with more authority? Well, firstly, you'll get more respect from your colleagues, your clients and your boss. You'll build more confidence in yourself and your own abilities. And and combined with all that, you'll do better work and you'll be able to make more of an impact in your workplace. And ultimately, you'll be able to move on to that next level of success that you desire. And because of that, you then speak with more authority, you become more confident and you go up and up and it just creates this positive cycle. And believe me, the more you practice doing this, the easier it will get. Okay. Now, if you want the written version of this podcast, you can go to thecmethod.com slash authority. That's thecmethod.com slash authority. And I'll put links that I mention on that page as well as the, the notes from this episode in case you forget and you want to have a recap. Okay. So I'm going to share with you nine ways to speak with more authority. You ready? Let's do it. Number one, believe that you have something worthwhile to share. Now, I believe I've spoken about this before on the podcast, but I share it again because it is so important. If you do not believe that you are good at your job and that you have good things, good ideas to share, then it's very difficult to speak with authority if you lack that belief in yourself. So if you haven't done this before, I want you to write down all your strengths, write them down, write down all your achievements. What are you proud of? You know, we often forget to celebrate those achievements or celebrate our success. So if you've made, maybe you've completed a project or you landed a client or you brought in X amount of dollars for your company, whatever it is, I want you to celebrate that and don't just go, oh, okay, cool. Let's move on to the next thing. Think about what you've achieved and especially if you've achieved more for someone at your level, then really celebrate that and write it down. Think about why you've been selected to do that job and to be in that position that you are in. You're there for a reason. Clearly, someone thinks that you're good enough to do it, okay? So you need to really believe that you deserve to be there. That's the first thing. 
The second thing is to make a decision to care less about what others think of you. I want you to go out there and think to yourself, you know what? I do have good ideas. I'm good. No, I'm awesome at my job. I'm highly skilled. And if you don't like me or the way I speak, you can go take a hike. Now, of course, don't say this out out loud, but you need to think this in your head. You will be surprised at how it affects how you speak and how you present yourself. Now, I believe so much in this. I, I believe that caring less So caring less is the thing that has helped me the most to reduce my nerves and speak confidently when I'm presenting to a group. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to have had a lot of um, opportunities to, to speak and I feel like I've done it so much. I don't really care anymore about what other people think. I just get up there and I'm like, you know what? Here's what I do. Here's what I'm going to share with you today. I'm really passionate about this. If you don't like me, whatever. I just, I don't even care anymore. I speak to the people who I know love me for who I am and who like what I've got to share. And when I look out to the audience, I look out at all the faces who are smiling and nodding and laughing and and people who are really engaged. People who are sitting there looking bored, I'm like, whatever. I don't, I don't need you here. You can, I don't know, go eat some food, whatever. I don't care. The way I see it, I think why bother wasting your energy on the people who don't like you and what you have to offer? Okay. If you can care less about what people think of you, you're not caring less about your ideas or about your work. No, that's important. But you don't care about what people think of those ideas or if those ideas will be shut down or not implemented. Okay. You don't care about the end result. All you do is you do the job that you're meant to do and you do it as well as you possibly can. And you don't care what other people are going to say or think about you. Okay. It's just not worth your energy. I read a great extract of a soon-to-be-released book by Mark Manson, who I've mentioned before on this podcast because I love his writing, and he writes in this extract, ever notice that sometimes when you care less about something, you do better at it? Notice how it's often the person who is the least invested in the success of something that actually ends up achieving it. Notice how sometimes when you stop giving an F, everything seems to fall into place. Now, you may have noticed this before. Uh, The Olympic Games just finished and we noticed with our Australian athletes, a lot of our medal winners were people who were not expected to win medals and a lot of our medal contenders who we had high expectations for didn't win the medals. They came, you know, sixth or tenth when they actually held the world record for, for whatever sport it was. And I see this as a perfect demonstration of when you when you care less or there's less pressure or you care less about the result, you do better. And some of these gold medal winners from Australia, they weren't expected to win and they were just happy to be at the Olympics. They were like, this is awesome, I'm at the Olympics. So they were caring less about the result. It was more about, hey, I'm here and I'm here to give it my best shot. And you know what? They win a freaking medal. So think about how you can apply this to your own life. Okay, enough of that, moving on. Number three, this is more of a technical thing instead of a mindset thing. Speak from your diaphragm. Now, this helps with your voice and how you sound. Now, most of us, we tend to speak through our throats like this, and you can probably hear the difference. We breathe through our our, um, uh, our upper chest, and it means that we speak through our – we're very tight and tense when we speak, and our jaw is very tight. So when we come – when we speak, we have these high little voices which don't command much authority. Now, what I want you to do is to breathe through your tummy, which is, that's your diaphragm. So breathe deep. And when you breathe deep, this is when you can put a lot more oomph and a lot more, I don't want to say force, but a lot of body behind your voice when you speak and you command much more attention and you speak with authority when you're speaking from the very depths of your diaphragm. So I want you to try that. Practice speaking from your throat, squeeze your throat really tight, and then take a deep breath and speak from your diaphragm and see if it changes your tone. And you'll also be able to project your voice around the whole room so that everyone can hear you instead of having to strain to hear you, okay? That was number three. 
Number four, learn how to interject with confidence. Okay, so here's the scenario. You're running a meeting or facilitating a workshop, but you're always going to get that person who loves the sound of their own voice and they'll take any opportunity to ask a question or share their opinion or argue with someone else. There's always one person. Now, it's great that they're engaged, but the problem is it takes up way too much time. Okay, and you need to step in and keep the the meeting moving. You know, sometimes people start to argue with each other, and if you lack the ability to speak with authority, those people will take over and they will start chatting and to start talking about things that aren't even important or not even relevant. Now, you need to be able to step in and keep that meeting moving. So if you're running the meeting, you need to be able to say, hey, guys, these are all valuable contributions. Thank you so much, but we do need to move on. Okay, next item. Now, I know it can be scary doing that, especially if these are senior people, but remember, if you've been asked to run that meeting or if you're in, you know, you're in charge of facilitating, that's your position. Like You are in that position. You've been given permission to do that, to organize people and say, hey, guys, stop. We need to move on. Now, one way you can do this is you may remember Natalie Brewer, who I interviewed in episode 56. I was once in a training workshop with her and she would, she had this great way of interrupting people who would sort of ramble on a bit too much. She'd say, can I just pause you there? Now, I love this because it was her way of saying, stop talking. You're, you're rambling. I need to say something now. But she did it in a really polite way, yet it was still said with authority and she still sounded very confident as she, as she said it. So if there are some people arguing in your meeting or if someone's talking too much, feel free to jump in with, can I just pause you there for a moment? And this is great because it's not saying stop talking. It's, it's insinuating that you're going to allow them to continue later. You're just pausing them for the moment. Okay. Now, when you do this, you pause them. Remember to always thank them for their contribution because most of the time people just want to feel like they're heard. You know, they may not get much attention in other areas of their life and work's the only place where they can vent and people will listen. So make sure you acknowledge them and go, Mike, thank you so much for your question or thanks so much for your comments. Really appreciate that. I am conscious of time, however, and we do need to move on. Okay. So just practice that. Can I pause you there? Thanks so much. We do need to move on. Or can we hand it over to to Paul now? now, It's his turn to say something or whatever. Okay, that was the fourth way to speak with more authority. We're on to the fifth way to speak with authority, and it's about speaking less. More specifically, removing filler words like, oh, I guess, and I think, and perhaps. And those, those words and phrases that make you sound like you're not sure of yourself, okay? Let's take in the example before, you're saying, hey, guys, we need to move on. Instead of saying, hey, guys, I think we need to move on now, how different does it sound when you go, we need to move on, okay? The I think, saying I think or I guess, completely superfluous. Because if you're saying we need to move on, clearly you think that it's right that you move on. So you don't need to say it. And also, do you want to sound like you're always saying, I guess this and I guess and I think, I think, as opposed to knowing something? So I want you to be aware if you, if when you speak, the language you, you're using makes you sound like you're guessing or you're thinking or you're unsure about something or perhaps maybe sort of we could kind of maybe do this. No, you want your language to be decisive. The sixth way to speak with more authority is to watch your inflection. Now, Australians are pretty bad at this. We tend to do this all the time. Like, do you sound like you're asking a question every time you speak? So you might say, it's time to move on. And people go, "Uh, is that a question or a statement? Okay. People do this even when they're talking about themselves. Hi, I'm Christina and I'm a public speaking coach and I'm really excited to be here. It's awesome. Right. It's, it's, 
it doesn't, you don't sound very authoritative or confident or sure of yourself when you have that upward inflection at the end of every sentence. So this is something else to be aware of and to practice. So when you speak, you say, hi, I'm Christina. I'm a public speaking coach. I'm really excited to be here, right? You you have that, it doesn't have to be a downward inflection, but it's a, a think of it as a straight line rather than upward or downward, okay? So watch your inflections. <laughs> Number seven. Now I've got two tips on body language because body language is so important. It's you know, people judge you by your body language before you've even opened your mouth to speak. You can communicate so much just by using your body. So I've got two body language tips for you. So number seven is body language tip number one, and it's to stand with authority. Now, if you think of, a, of an army sergeant, right, does does he stand with his, his feet crossed over and his hands folded in his lap and his shoulders shrugged? No. He stands nice and tall with his shoulders back. He's got an excellent posture. He stands with his feet, uh, you know, sort of apart-ish in a nice solid, solid stance. Now, I want you to think about doing this whenever you walk into the room. Unhunch those shoulders. Push your chin back a little bit so you're not hunched forward. Stand with your feet slightly apart. You know, don't, don't sway back and forth. If you want to be a leader and seen as an authority and an expert in your workplace and your industry, you need to act and stand like one. Number eight of this episode is body language tip number two, and that is to use your hands. Now, it's a bit hard for me to show you this because it's audio only and you can't see me, but if you think about the placement of your palms. I'll actually put a link to a TED talk by body language expert Alan Pease. He does a whole TED talk about placement of your palms and it's fascinating. And he talks about if you want to speak with authority, you turn your palms down. So if you picture me sort of with my hands flat and pointing down going, guys, you need to stop talking now. We need to move on with my hands facing down. That's a really authoritative um, hand positioning. On the other hand, if you want to build trust with people and show them that you're that you're trustworthy and that you're not going to hurt anyone and that you're open and willing to contribute and discuss, then you have your palms open and you show your hands. Or if you're if you're taking questions from the audience or you're pointing at people to to say, "Yes, thanks, thank you for your question. Yes, we have a question over here." I well, I don't point with my point finger. I I leave my palm open and flat and I point with my hand, my whole hand held up. And you'll see this in the video if you go check it out uh, in the show notes at thecmethod.com slash authority. Now, a simple flick of the the wrists to, to switch your hand positioning can mean the difference between coming across as being open and warm and friendly and then being the leader and being decisive. Okay, it's very subtle, but it makes a big difference. So make sure you check out that video. Alrighty, and we're up to number nine of how to speak with more authority. And number nine is to observe other people who you believe speak with authority. Okay, so this might be your boss or someone else at a, a higher level um, position to you who you really admire and you you see them walk into a room and you go, wow, they really command the room. Wow, look, they, they run that meeting so well. They keep everyone in check. They don't put up with any crap, you know, from anyone. So watch them and make note of how they stand, how they speak. What are they doing with their hands? What language are they using? Do they ever use the words, I guess, or I think, or perhaps maybe sorta? Probably not. So this is a great way to to learn, learn from people who are already really good at it and see what it is that they do and then see what works for them and then copy it, right? I mean, of course, you don't copy it exactly the way they do it because that's going to be inauthentic to who you are, but adapt it so it makes sense for you and so you come across as still being you and still being authentic. For example, for for me, like when I show people how to do hand movements, 
Personally, I, I'm a very expressive person. So I make big hand movements. When I, when I point to people, I, or indicate towards people or things, I spread my arms all the way out. But for you, you might be not so expressive, but you, and so your gestures might be more closer to your body or a bit smaller, but that's okay. You can still make those same palm up, palm down, shoulders back, um, sort of gestures, but, and they still have, you know, the same effect but they're more authentic and real to who you are. So there you go. Nine ways to speak with more authority. If you want a recap of this episode, go to the show notes at thecmethod.com slash authority. And I'll put the links to that video I mentioned and also that article in there. And also, if you do want to have more confidence, don't forget to sign up for the Small Talk Made Simple class. It's a 10-day email series and that'll help you to be more, it will start your journey to becoming more confident when speaking about yourself and having conversations with people at work and when you're at networking events because it is super, super important. Alrighty. Well, that's all from me this week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have, I'd really appreciate it if you could share it with your colleagues or friends or family, if you think that they would also benefit from it. It's the best way to get the word out about this podcast. So I'd really appreciate your help if you could share it with other people. It's it's just an amazing way for me to be able to get my message across to more people. Alrighty, take care, Rockstar, and I will see you next week. Keep on being awesome. My name's Christina Cantors, and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. <laughs>